Let's just do i. So we got to figure out i to the three first. All right. So going back through, we remember what i is, right? i is the square root of a negative one, mm -hmm. right? You can't take the square root of a negative number, so that's our imaginary i. Then what we did was we said, well, what happens if I square both sides? Okay, what, what happens if I say I times I? Well, um, we have to think about it. If we do I squared equals the square root of negative one squared, right? If we square both sides, the square root of negative one squared is just going to equal negative one, right? Then let's say we multiply by i again. So let's multiply by i times i squared. That's going to give you i cubed, right? Well, so if I multiply by i on the left side of i squared, I get i cubed. And I, what if I multiply negative 1 times i? I'm going to obtain negative i. Make sense? What I did from here to here? All right, so i cubed is equal to negative i. Which is, yes. Okay. So think about this way. You have i equals the square root of negative 1, right? So then negative i would equal just the square root of 1? So if I multiply by i on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Then, well, that's the square root of negative 1 again, right? So that equals negative 1. So i squared equals negative 1 because i is square root of negative 1. So that's square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is negative 1. Okay. Well, let's say we, let's do it again. Let's multiply by i on this side. Let's multiply by i again. Now I get i cubed equals negative i, right? Let's multiply by i again on both sides. So now I have i times i cubed, which is i to the fourth, equals negative i times i is going to give you a negative i squared, right? Mm -hmm. What's i squared? i squared is equal to negative 1. And it's negative, right? So it would be y. Oh, hold on. So i squared is equal to what? Negative 1. Negative 1. Well, a negative negative 1 is going to give you a what? Positive 1. Positive 1, right. right? So therefore, we have i to the fourth equals a positive 1. Okay. Then what we'll do is let's go back to i. Let's multiply by i again. Okay, so now i to the fifth equals what? i to the fifth equals i one. I. Or I. One times i. And what is i equal to? i is equal to negative one. Neg square root of negative one. So what happens is we're going through a loop. After you get to one, two, three, four, what happens is it repeats again. Does that make sense? Yes. So it, there's only three answers we could have. It, it could only be the square root of negative 1, negative 1, negative i, and positive 1. It's going to keep on repeating through those four. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is, you can keep on going i to the 6th, i to the 7th, i to the 8th, i to the 9th, i to the 10th, and just keep on going through that. But the cool thing about this is, is this repeats. Every fit, Once you go to the 5th, it goes 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Each one of those repeats what the order is. So what we can do to kind of... Um, circumvent that to kind of speed it up is to say, all right, well, if I divide 31 divided by 4, what would be my remainder? So let's do that. Let's do 31 divides in the 4 with the remainder of 3, mm -hmm. right? So pretty much what you can think about is your remainder is 3 is going to be like your leading exponent left over. So really what this is, is you're going to have a remainder of 3, so i to the first, i to the second, i to the third is going to be your answer. So i to the third is equal to negative i. Therefore, i to the 31st is the same thing as i to the third, which is equal to negative i. All right. Can yeah. I make a little sense? Yeah. We just got to...